Hi, I'm Travis Raychek and welcome to Inside Mississippi Juco Football brought to you by HeritageProperties.com as we come to you tonight from inside the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame and Museum showcasing our Mississippi community and junior colleges, athletic superiority, academic prowess, and economic impact. And it is playoff time in the MACJC. We have highlights from both games. We will start in scuba as number two East Mississippi hosted number five Mississippi Gulf Coast. And over the past four years, this has developed into a very unique and potent rivalry. Even though they're not in the same division, it is always special when these schools get together. Both are in the hunt for a state and national title. Here's Mike Frazier with the highlights. To scuba we go, there's the mighty lion marching band of East Mississippi. And here come the Bulldogs of Mississippi Gulf Coast. Bulldogs fifth, East Mississippi two nationally. Antoine Wells would get the scoring started. Seven nothing Bulldogs. Wells led the league in the regular season in rushing in the MACJC. Second quarter now, here's Pruitt. And he's gonna connect with his man CJ Bates. Game tied at seven opening moments of the second quarter. Here's James Booth capping off a 12 play 71 yard drive for a touchdown, 14-7 Gulf Coast, they lead it at the break. Drew White now, third quarter, 27 yarder gives East Mississippi its first lead at 17-14, and that would lead to successive points. Here's Dontrell Pruitt gonna turn the corner and dive to the far pylon and make the score 24-14, game now in the fourth quarter. Moore Pruitt. Looking here off a turnover, comes right here to Antoine Atkins with a nifty turn and catch for the touchdown, 31-14 East Mississippi. Back the other way, Bulldogs answer to Quill Williams, the University of Auburn commit with the catch, trimming the lead to 10. But back come the Lions, Pruitt now to C.J. Bates, 49 yards on the score, and East Mississippi would lead it 38-21. Bulldogs not done. Flare out to the near post. It's caught for the touchdown, 38-28, but just two minutes left. And here's Thomas Lekenderick able to cap off a drive, put it into the end zone, and East Mississippi a winner, 45-28. Antoine, what's going through your mind right now moments after this one? Oh, it's pain. It hurt. Well, I just hope the guys come back next year and have a better season than we did this year. But we made too many mistakes, and it uh, cost us. So. You you were the leading rusher in the league all season long. Uh, tough league to be the leading rusher in. Uh, you got to be pretty proud of, of how you performed for the Bulldogs. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, I just give it to my old line. I think they do a good job blocking. I think they the reason I got it more than me, what I do. Where are you going next year? Uh, probably Georgia State, but I'm not sure yet. I haven't made many decisions, so we'll see after that. Jonathan, uh, just your thoughts here after this uh, tough game today. I think we could have done better. We turned the ball up too much, and I don't know. We worked hard enough, we prepared for it. We just, we just should have took care of the ball better. Reflect back uh, moments after your career ends here at Gulf Coast Community College. How was the experience? It was great. I mean, met some good friends. I got my family out here in gold. I never forget them, and I, I never, I just never forget it. Jaron. Number two in the country, you had a stiff test today, you guys passed. Yes sir, well you know, it's always come down to staying humble and that's all we had to do. We had to come and go in the locker room and get focused and come back out and play our game. Jaron, you've played in this league, uh, your thoughts, how tough is the MACJC? Man, it's, it's really a tough league, you know, I done play against some players, I play against a couple of teams and I got to tell you, this league right here is one of the best leagues in the country. You know, you could sell in this league, you could sell anywhere. Who recruited you here? Why did you choose East Mississippi? Uh, Coach Jones. Coach Jones, he's at Pearl River now, but he recruited me to come here from Hargrave Military Academy. And, you know, I know they won the Nationals in 2011. And, you know, any team that uh, can go that far with the Nationals has a great program, great coaches, and great people around them, you know. And, I mean, it's work ethic, everything they do, you know, you got to believe in it. You believe in it, you can do anything. DJ, man, you guys are back to the state championship game with your number two ranking in the country. Got to feel good. Yes, sir. It feels great. Ready to get it uh, on the road, get it ready for next week. Uh, just want to grind it out and get this win. What was what was it like there in the trenches today against a very talented, well-respected, good football team today? It was a great game, but I think we came prepared and they came prepared also. But um, we had we had a little fight in us today and we uh, came out with the victory. Well, it was a good time. As a group, has this team felt any pressure being number two in the country for as long as you have? 
I, well, I feel like we feel pressure every week because we want to do our best, you know. We work hard to do our best, and um, the pressure going to come with everything. So we try to just work hard and let our hard work play for us. Steve, your thoughts after this this uh, football game here today? Uh, thoughts are we got beat by a good football team. Uh, East Mississippi got a fine football team. Thought we had our chances. You know, we had uh, we went up seven nothing. They came back and tied it up. Then we went up. I guess it was fourteen seven. And then uh, we went up twenty one seven. And then we they called the holding down their sideline. Uh, so that that call hurt us. We had a you know I, I thought there were some things that uh, where we had opportunities to 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 put them away and we didn't do it and uh, the, the mark of a, a, a great football team they hung in there and hung in there and then uh, they started making some plays in the second half I thought our defense played extremely well in the in the first half and then through through spurts in the second half offensively we, we were able but we 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 didn't convert some short yardage uh, and there were some you know we had some opportunities so you know for, uh, they got a fine football team. Congratulations to them. I'm, I'm very proud of our guys. I don't think uh, I don't think our guys got anything to be ashamed of. I thought we matched up. I thought we matched up well, and they made a few more plays than we did. This recruiting class. Your thoughts on, on this class you brought through? Uh, we had some, you know, some great players. Uh, Moncrief, and yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not going to call them all out because they're every one every one of these sophomores, whether they're being recruited or not, great kids, love them all. And uh, this was a this was a fun team to coach, and we're definitely going to miss all these all these sophomores. From uh, I got a bunch of O linemen, tight ends, DBs, D line, linebackers, running backs. Uh, you can go go deep snapper. You can go down the list. Uh, a lot of them will be recruited. Some of them maybe not, but I love them everyone the same. Coach. Your thoughts? You're back to the state championship game once again. Yeah, yeah fortunately for uh, the Lion Nation, the uh, state championship has to go through scuba this year, and we're excited about that. Defensive struggle on both sides in the first half. Uh, how surprised were you that it was a defensive game for half a football game? Uh, not. I mean, it, it, our guys didn't play very well the first half. Uh, defensively, we were on the field a long time. You know, Steve and them did a great job uh, carrying out their game plan the first part of the game. And uh, and, I, and we were on the field a lot, and, and we didn't need to be. And, um, uh, you know, the second half, I think our guys came out. Uh, the, the big, I think the momentum changer uh, was halftime. Uh, it got to halftime. Our guys got in, regrouped, uh, understood. You know, we talked. We had a, we had a real good talk about things that were happening on the field, and uh, and we we handled them. They came out. Uh, the the biggest stop of the day was uh, the defense stopping them third quarter, very, very very beginning, and then us being able to go out and score. And then it was kind of a it was kind of a a, a snowball effect after that. How has this team handled being ranked number two for as long as you have been? Is this something they relish, or uh, uh, from a pressure standpoint? We learned our lesson last year, and we've. Let me tell you something. Last year we talked about it. It was every week, coach. We got they dropped us. They did this. They did that. Uh, you know, we, we got it early on in the summer. We, we didn't care. We, we, they rank us 55th. They did whatever. It doesn't matter. We're going to play. And we're going to play hard each week. And at the end, when we're all through and said and done, we'll see where we are. This is a great rivalry in many sports between East Mississippi and Gulf Coast. Rather unique because you don't play in the same division. Well, I think that's I think that's a testament to uh, uh, the uh, the administrations and, and and how they have put an emphasis on on, on athletics on being on being on quality whether it be athletics or academics. And I think uh, we've we're, together uh, we've been uh, probably the the top athletic teams uh, in the state. And I think when you uh, when you have a chance to, with the rivalry. Like we've had uh, starting back probably in 09. Uh, you know, it, it's it's uh, it's it's really uh, it's it's really something fun. It was a great atmosphere. It was something that was uh, a tremendous to be a part of, and especially when you win. But uh, it was it was a great atmosphere for junior college football. Uh, both schools should be very 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 happy. In the other semifinal game, it was the talented Itawamba Indians traveling to number four Jones County Junior College in Ellisville with a berth to the MACJC state title game on the line. Again, here's Mike Frazier with the highlights. To Ellisville we go home with the number four Jones County Junior College Bobcats and charging out the Itawamba Community College Indians from Fulton in the state semifinal playoff. Picked off here, Jamal Lucas gets the interception, gets a block right there and he's gonna go 87 yards and three minutes in, it's seven nothing Jones County Junior College. All right, Jones on offense gonna camp off here on a three yard run, Justin Harris off left tackle. Nine minutes to go, first quarter, 14 nothing Jones. More defense, more Lucas. There he is again, Johnny on the spot with the pick and he's gonna take this one 50 
53 yards, 10 minutes into the game, 21-0 Jones County Junior College. Itawamba again to throw. This time, the defense. This time, Charles Lewis. Far sideline, 25 yards, and he's into the end zone. 28-0 Jones in the first quarter. Second quarter now, Q Boyd off the left side. He's a short yardage guy. He hits that one to make it 35-0. It'd be 42-0 Jones County at the break. Second half, Dylan Bozier, the Louisiana commit, takes it in, 49-0. Itawamba would finally punch one in. Tobias Lofted from one yard out. Defensively, here's Jeff Johnson recovering a fumble. 49-14, late fourth quarter. ICC gonna get a nice run here. And Fernie Brand, look at the eyes here. Darts to the outside, turns the corner at the 10, trims the lead to 49-21, but not enough. Jones County advances with a 49-21 win over ICC.